For several occasions now, we've talked about Proverbs chapter 29 that deals with uh, corruption in the culture of that day and corruption within the governing uh, bodies of that day. Sometimes you found kings, in fact, you've had a lot of them in the Old Testament that were very ruthless. A lot of them had no principles by which to live at all that were of value to themselves or to the nation they attempted to rule. They were selfish, they were greedy, they were ungodly. There are a lot of parallels in Proverbs chapter 29 to situations today. And yet some of us say, well, you, you just can't talk about things like that because you know we're, we're focusing on, on sharing the gospel of Christ. Jesus called Herod that fox. John the Baptizer condemned Herod for the situation he was in as far as his family setting, his marital setting. Uh, um, the Herodian family was horrendous in a lot of ways. John was beheaded because of that. In fact, in Acts chapter 16, Paul and Silas, the Apostle Paul and his companion Silas, as are traveling on this missionary and that missionary journey, are beaten and imprisoned in the city of Philippi. The, sta the statement is made in verse 35 the next day. When it was day, the magistrates sent the officers saying, let those men go. So the keeper of the prison reported these things to Paul saying, the magistrates have sent to let you go. Now therefore depart and go in peace. Here's what Paul says. Paul said, they have beaten us openly, uncondemned Romans and have thrown us into prison. And now do they put us out secretly? Oh, no, indeed. Let them come themselves and get us out. The officers told these words to the magistrates and they were afraid when they heard that they were Romans. You broke the law and now you want to sweep it under the rug? That's not going to work. So even though the government is something that is supposed to be there for the good of all the citizens of the country which they govern, like is pointed out in Proverbs 29, there are a lot of problems with individuals coming to power that basically have no principles at all. I want to go from Proverbs 29 to Proverbs 30, beginning in verse 11. And this time it's not just the government, but it's culture itself. There's a generation that curses its father and does not bless its mother. There's a generation that is pure in its own eyes, nor is it yet washed from its filthiness. There is a generation, oh how lofty are their eyes, their eyelids are lifted up. There is a generation whose teeth are like swords, whose fangs are like knives to devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among men. The leeches. The leech has two daughters, give and give. A generation pure in its own eyes interesting kind of statement it says though we believe that we can do no wrong we set the rules we will do as we see fit but the problem the problem is an unwillingness to learn the problem is a problem that thinks I've got all of the answers the problem is I think I need to start out in my life with my first job making as much as my parents who've worked for decades to get where they are. It's an irrational way to take a look at life. There's a statement that's made in, in John chapter 7. And it's, it's a discussion that takes place among those in the Sanhedrin, those that are the most influential leaders of Judaism and the day of Jesus. And they don't like what they've been hearing. The statement is made Nobody speaks like this, but the Pharisees are upset when that statement's made. And they make this comment in verse 48 of John 7, If any of the rulers of the Pharisees believed in him, but this crowd that does not know the law is accursed. You think, now wait a minute. Jesus is actually pointing out the law, the law that they had misused, abused, misquoted, corrupted, but they're saying Jesus doesn't know the law. Nicodemus, he who came to Jesus by night, being one of those influential Jewish leaders, says this. 
Does our law judge a man before it hears him and knows what he's doing? Great question. They answered and said to him, Are you also from Galilee? Search and look for no prophet has arisen out of Galilee. Which is really kind of a statement of ignorance. You look at this, the situation or the setting, the, the, the landscape around where they say no prophet comes from. There is an Old Testament prophet that comes out of that area. They seemingly don't recognize it or don't know it or just cast that fact aside. The statement that's made back in, back in Proverbs 30 deals with a generation that could care less about fact, doesn't understand anything other than what they themselves determine. And it's a blight on culture because of that. Listen to these verses again. There's a generation that curses its father, does not bless its mother, a generation that is pure in its own eyes, yet is not washed from its filthiness, a generation of how lofty are their eyes and their eyelids are lifted up, a generation whose teeth are like swords, whose fangs are like knives, to devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among men. The leech has two daughters. Give and give some more. I pray very much that our culture opens up its eyes and those that fall into the category of this generation that is spoken of in chapter 30 opens its eyes and actually starts thinking for itself. Because right now there are a lot of people in our culture that are doing neither. Interesting verses. Please stay safe. We'll talk again soon.